reports. Um, <clears throat> it's a big pleasure to have uh, you guys all over again. Uh, we are going live with Priyanka, so she is putting on many hats. Uh, you know, as a uh, as a co-producer of this whole session, uh, she is also doing a session, and she did one yesterday. So you know, happy to have you um, and uh, kickstart all yours. Thank you, Setu. So, uh, so guys, I I don't need. I think I don't need to intro myself all over again. <laughs> and uh, to be uh, to be fair, you know, I would not have liked to do the face recognition session uh, right again. So we will keep the face recognition part very short uh, because because I think it's been discussed by Andre also yesterday. And let us uh, you know explore other offerings uh, like Bing Visual Search and other AI for uh, good initiatives where. Where you can classify species, where you can, you know, uh, help save endangered species or rare uh, metals, rare plants, those kind of stuff, and how how AI for Earth using computer vision is uh, is is aiding us to do that. All right, so let's jump start the session. Uh, so this would be the agenda. About uh, we'll we'll just. Uh, learn about face service in very brief okay and we will have more fun today with uh, you know how deep fake identification goes right so we will uh, see like how uh, even with sophisticated face recognition it, it is easy to spoof your way uh, into uh, i mean you know uh, by faking identities or by overlapping images creating a realistic image by uh, photoshopping or creating deep fakes so this is about me and uh, this is about you know in general azure cognitive services where you have lots of offerings like you have for decision making for computer vision computer vision also it goes into uh, like the vision services also is bifurcated into computer vision and custom vision you have speech you have language you have uh, um, anomaly detection those kind of stuff right and cognitive services are basically ai as a service so they are packaged uh, services who, which you can use you know call like apis or use the sdks to program them right and um, yeah, so the, this, this is a bird's eye view of all the web services. So to, uh, cognitive services. Today we'll be dealing with especially vision related stuff. So could be computer vision, could be custom vision. All right. And uh, we will see, you know, the implications, the ramifications uh, these services can have into developing real sophisticated applications. So uh, the, the I mean, the question which we usually ask is when you have all your Python libraries and, you know, the TensorFlow and PyTorch and stuff, then where do cognitive services fall into picture? Right. So, I mean, where to use cognitive services? When do you use your usual uh, Python libraries and other services? So that is like, for example, like a generic. A solution like face recognition so face recognition using any technology using any libraries it's just about detecting a face so there are certain basics like where it maps out a rectangle across your facial features and there are some nodal points to chart out and then you know uh, create a create a face object and tag the features and then you know try to uh, identify whether who is this like a celebrity or a landmark or uh, similar faces and stuff like that all right so for this is like a generic uh, use case so face recognition so unless i have very specific uh, business cases where i have to uh, plug in something extra for my own enterprise or my own use case then it's a total ball game altogether different ball game altogether but otherwise like uh, speech to text or dictation or language translation right so these generic use cases where you really need not build anything from scratch so there you can use cognitive services which is uh, prepackaged for you and you can start using all the inherent capabilities so you need not actually start building a face recognition algorithm and train it on faces and then you know keep on iterating uh, refining it iteratively refining it for your use case so that is where uh, where, where cognitive services are uh, very handy. So for, uh, you know, the uh, usual scenario, space recognition, uh, speech to text or voice translation, those sort of things, you can you can readily use the cognitive services. And uh, and if, if, you know, in case you have very specific use cases, which, you know, you have to use machine learning for your enterprise needs, then you go for 
uh, custom uh, made machine learning services okay so something very specific which cannot be uh, which is uh, which cannot be uh, uh, generalized or cannot be uh, done using cognitive services so when you talk about face right so face as a service face recognition is a part of the vision services vision uh, cognitive services is offered by microsoft so what does face do is it is a low friction state of the art facial recognition it includes face detection identification uh, and grouping so basically for example if i have like my uh, face uh, my faces my pictures in different angles then it can easily identify that even if i have my uh, face in a side profile or you know or tilted downwards upwards and it can still group all of them together and uh, determine that whether these two this the, these all faces form particular group for a single person or not all right so identification is there then uh, emotion recognition is there and for using and consuming the face service right you need not have any uh, machine learning expertise so traditionally people who program with python will know that for face recognition and all you will use pca principal component analysis or dimensionality reduction and those sort of things so it's uh, i mean just having to consume the face service you need not have any background for all these things all right so no nothing to do with eigen values eigen vectors and stuff uh, very easily you can just on board call the service pass parameters get post whatever uh, the attributes and you're all set so features of face recognition of course i mean as it is with all of microsoft offerings uh, it's advanced facial recognition pretty easy to use flexible deployment built in security so uh, the the very question now you know especially with the, the uh, furor which is going over uh, going on over whatsapp privacy policies and data sharing and you know data being sold and stuff like that so for face recognition whenever you are uploading pictures or, or training the algorithm for certain you know identifying similar faces face groups person person list those sort of things be assured that your data is there only like for the uh, for for the purpose of identification your pictures or you know or the data is not stored or used anywhere so it's it's uh, transient i mean you just upload it will do the recognition it will give back the result so the, the json object so it's not going to do anything with your pics or going to store them or you know sell your resell your data for certain other commercial purposes so built in security can be assured of that all right and uh, uh, of course like can be easily deployed to azure basic concepts are for example so now let's say like when you and me we talk about face right so what we notice we notice the features we notice the complexion we notice the color of the hair the color of the eyes and stuff like that right but for a in terms of a machine when we when we say like how does a machine understand face so for a machine it is like how do you define eyes right so which means there are certain predefined pre landmarks for eyes where is the location of the nose so it won't see uh, per se your eyes per se or your teeth per se it is like a uh, for for it, it are, these are all points in a space like in a 3d space and then it charts out the eye should be somewhere here and the distance from the eyes to this point that is the nose then so these are called as nodal points the the width of the nose the depth of the eye sockets the cheekbones the height of the cheekbones the jaw line right so how does it determine whether you are smiling or not uh, which means if the the normal coordinates of the jawline are extended that's a smile right so those sort of things so when a computer sees a face it sees a rectangle okay it sees a rectangle and it sees all these nodal points so these become these nodal points so basic nodal points in case of uh, azure face recognition they are there are 80 nodal points so these nodal points they become a face print like our fingerprint right they they become a face print and then each uh, face more or less will have a distinctive face print so when a computer sees um, a face right what it tries to do is it chart out a rectangle chart out a rectangle and try to discern these nodal points so when we talk of face detection it is locating a human face in an image face detection works with human faces only guys try for animal faces and let me know so it uh, it, it is a, a action of locating human faces and then it returns different kind of face related data okay 
uh, then uh, as i was saying each detected phase corresponds to a rectangle field in the response so it will chart out a rectangle which is either with the tilt or not okay so let's say if your uh, head uh, your your face is tilted in an angle then should the rectangle also tilt or it should be a perpendicular rectangle that kind of uh, uh, yaw it is called as yaw so that kind of tilt is also uh, uh, detected okay and uh, when it returns back the response it is in the form of pixel coordinates right so for left top width and height and in the api response there are other attributes returned like uh, emotion or color of the eyes blur quotient and uh, smile present or not approximate age and those kind of stuff right so these are the face landmarks which we are talking of okay so th these are uh, the the points which are charted out by the face recognition algorithm and by default there are 27 predefined landmark points each algorithm which is you know for example if you try it on aws sage maker they might have a little different set of points so this is for the uh, face service cognitive service and these are the attributes which can be detected age blur emotion exposure and uh, trust me the the age attribute is more or less you know uh, it is um, uh, pretty precisely detected so if i if i upload my pictures from, from maybe 2 years uh, uh, ago or stuff like that the age returned is pretty correct emotion exposure facial hair gender glasses head pose head pose meaning the uh, faces orientation in 3d space which is like whether my he uh, head is tilted up sideways downwards those kind of stuff make up noise noise is the visual noise like uh, some sort of blurring in the background occlusion occlusion is whether there are some blocking uh, uh, things like you're know, something occluding my face right right uh, right uh, something which is shrouding the picture okay smile is like you know it is a expression of the given face with the binary values 0 and 1 okay so let us quickly uh, see uh, see a demo of you know what all in in real time what all uh, sorry. yep so what all things can be easily seen so let us take a picture so let us you know not use the one which is given so let us take a picture right we are browsing okay the size of the picture is too big or too small all right okay let us take this picture okay and let us submit so now immediately you see that once i have submitted the picture once I have submitted the picture, it has charted out a rectangle. Even if the a person's position, the head position is not, you know, actual like a center, uh, the uh, face is not centered properly. The rectangle is trying to chart out uh, the face rectangle. Okay, uh, the uh, cognitive service is trying to chart out the face rectangle to capture the facial features. There are two types of detection model: detection one and detection two. All right, so let's let us try using the detection one model. The detection one model will it uh, returns a lot of features. Like for example, it it will return you hair. No, it it has hair. It uh, hair, smile. It's not discernible, right? Gender is male. Yes, gender is male. Approximate age is forty four facial hair is sorry facial hair is present see so glasses yes it it also gives the it gives the a type reading glasses makeup no lip makeup no emotion nothing discernible surprise a bit yes otherwise it's 84 percent neutral occlusion yes see his he's wearing a helmet so forehead occluded yes eyes occluded no so there are glasses so, but that's not an occlusion right accessories yes he's wearing glasses and it's almost like a hundred percent confidence that they know he's hearing uh, wearing glasses type is headgear okay blur blur level is low so the picture is pretty pretty crisp right noise level medium meaning for example you find you see some sort of uh, blur image here like this side so yeah so noise is medium then face landmarks this is the uh, the coordinates of all the face landmarks like we saw the eye sockets jawline nose bridge 
uh, width of the, um, uh, I mean, uh, the, the distance between your lips and nose bridge, those kind of stuff, right? So that all is written. And yep, right. So let us try the girl here. And let us, if we if we use a detection zero one model, face rectangle charting out, hair color brown. Yes, 99% confidence. Then, uh, so it has charted out a lot of so color brown with 99% color black about 57% color red red very low confidence bl uh, blonde also no so probably it's like you know 100% almost sure that the hair color is brown smile yes obviously head pose head pose means it is tilted right the head is tilted so the, those are the coordinates of the head pose again glasses is there eye makeup true lip makeup true okay and uh, so those sort of things now what is the difference between model 01 and 02 right so model 01 while it gives a lot of lot of attributes it is not very accurate in charting out the rectangles or especially in case of uh, pictures which might be blurred which might uh, the the, the uh, i mean the pose might not be very clear like you know if i'm looking up so which means the face rectangle will be able to chart out only a bit of my features so those kind of stuff uh, are not very obvious or not very correctly precisely captured with the detection 01 model so detection 02 while it just gives you the face rectangle it is much more accurate much more powerful and um, uh, depending on your use cases so what sort of use cases you're going for you can accordingly choose the models right so you have face detection you have face verification right verification is what is like do these faces belong to the same person all right so when uh, i mean this is this is uh, something very funny you know so what happens is uh, facebook when it is tagging right so there's an auto tagging feature so now once or twice uh, let's say you have tagged a person or that that person is in, in your friend list and when you are uploading pictures and when you're trying to tag it will automatically uh, 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 try and you know because of face verification uh, it will try to tag the person automatically in your images so what happens is if let's say if you're not very careful about the tag so once or twice it has happened that when my uh, husband uploaded our uh, pictures okay so we are going somewhere or we are out somewhere and he's uh, uploaded a picture like enjoying with and uh, if in the tag is not verified it has tagged my sister <laughs> so which means the face uh, uh, recog the face verification was trying to map i mean trying to take my picture and then identify it almost with the 100 percent confidence that it belongs to my sister and then tagging my sister so it's the likelihood of two faces uh, being the same and yeah just to be clear we are not twins but yeah i mean you know that is how similar our faces appeared in the algorithm and that's why automatically whenever if you're not sure of the tagging it tags my sister so the, the likelihood of the face belonging to the same person all right so for example if you see this dude here this guy here and you uh, see like it, it has charted out the uh, face here it has charted out the face rectangle so even if you know this is a bit of a bent uh, profile this is like a proper uh, perpendicular central picture profile still the face recognition is able to identify that these two belong to the same person with the confidence of 93 let us try yes again with 91 percent confidence it is trying to say that they belong to the same person what about this so this one is like, you know, a, a very far away profile. This one is a near but side profile and still almost with confidence it is able to determine. What about this? Okay. So what about this? And here, I think I need to sign in or have I need to have a subscription for that. I think maybe only the first four or five uh, are free. All right. So otherwise we can browse and we can submit. So let us try. Okay, still with 91, sorry, with 91% confidence, it is able to say that these belong to the same person. All right. So this is how the face verification goes. And what is perceived emotion recognition? Perceived emotion recognition is uh, 
detect the perceived features like what we what we saw earlier right in our detection 01 model that it could uh, it could detect emotion like anger contempt disgust those surprise so in the first picture we saw it was registering an emotion of surprise for the uh, dude with the helmet on right so same stuff so perceived emotion recognition and lot of other things like you know you can have a large face you can have a face uh, group you can have a of a, a large person group a person list those kind of things so maybe you are uh, grouping pictures together and you are training them and then when it can still identify so this is a group picture right so it is still able to identify different individuals and then if you have a set of pictures like this it can still club those individuals together and say hey maybe this person and uh, uh, this person in this pic and this person in another pic the faces belong to maybe one particular dude right so that sort of that sort of thing again uh, you know moving on so this is this is the sort of uh, this is the sort of, uh, of you know uh, uh, the beauty with which we, the easy uh, easiness uh, you can integrate uh, and the flexibility with which you can integrate the face recognition services in your applications right sorry okay so having seen uh, what what we can what what Uh, the type of functionality facilities we can get so uh, you know in technical terms mapping these things so whenever your face is detected it uh, becomes a sort of data structure which is detected face or a persisted face right and again if you have a list of faces for the same person that becomes a face list or a large face list if you want to train it on a uh, huge number of uh, faces right same way person so uh, once like you have a lot of faces and then it it is trained to belong to one particular person that becomes a person object person data structure same way person group okay so assorted list of person objects so faces group of faces become a person group of persons will become a person group or a large person group sorry 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 for that uh hi setu okay sorry i lost my uh, screen sharing okay so whenever so i was talking of uh, the data structures right detected face persisted persisted, persisted face face list and stuff and uh, the face recognition operations as we saw where verify find similar you group together you identify now this way uh, another interesting concept in face recognition which is called as using the head pose attribute okay so what happens is uh, this this is uh, an indicator of the liveness which means if i try to spoof my way into a biometric system so where i am trying to you know just hold a mask of some other person and then trying to get into a system which is uh, which is locked by using the face recognition biometric uh, type of a uh security authentication so can i do that is it do uh, is it doable or how do face recognition systems work around this limitation so that is using the contribute of the uh, head pose attribute so liveness indicator wherein you know you can move your head sideways up and down okay in the 3d the three dimensional space so that uh, are some things called as roll and pitch right so the way you can move your head either upwards sideways right uh, up and down sideways and the stuff like that so the li that liveness indicator it enables the face recognition algorithm to detect your your, your angle like the head pose attribute and then helps us against you know spoofing our way into uh, systems by using masks or using just uh, you know uh, i mean if i just hold a picture of someone in front of me and try to authenticate myself not possible right so you can detect head gesture like nodding shaking by tracking the head pose changes in real time that is how it does 
the detection model as we saw where you know the model 01 and 02 and uh, depending on the use case and the level of accuracy which you want you can use either of those two so it has improved accuracy but returns less attributes and this has less accuracy but returns more attributes okay this all also you know face recognition can be used to analyze videos in real time right so your video frames you are feeding what what it does is when your video is playing it captures the frames and then sends them so uh, let's say vi video is playing per uh, time per unit of time frames are captured static frames are captured sent to the cloud then analyze so who is there in this frame return back to us okay so uh, how to analyze videos in real time so there are multiple ways of you know solving this problem in real time because this is what we require real time first is infinite loop where you know each iteration it grabs a frame analyzes it and then uh, it it gives us back the result but what is uh, i mean in this you, uh, the thing is that there's a wait involved right so i have to grab a frame send it even if you say instantaneous still there's some time like some uh, time uh, consumed in co computing the result and sending it back to us other could be parallelizing api calls so which means i just grab frames and send them one after the other the problem with parallelizing API is I do not uh, know the order in which the results were sent and they were received. So maybe frame one went, uh, frame frame one went, and then frame three went, and then frame two went. But frame two uh, computed earlier, and I got back the result, and followed by frame three, and so on. So my sequencing is lost. The third way is to do a producer-consumer design, wherein what we do is like uh, the the uh, uh, we took the first we take the first approach where you have, you are running an infinite loop and you're consuming the frames but now instead of you know giving the result as they are received you put it in a queue so my sequencing is meant uh, is maintained right so instead of consuming the results as soon as they are available the producer it will put the tasks into a queue and keep track of them so that is how you know uh, even if my frames are processed not in order the results are uh, uh, processed in order and i can maintain the sequencing okay that being said let us uh, you know move on to deep phased fake detection before we move on to deep fake detection i also want to show you some of the other uh, very very good offerings for uh, face recognition and i mean sorry for computer vision services let us start with bing search right visual search so we will cover visual search we will cover some real vision innovation uh, labs and uh, real life projects from microsoft which is called as ai for good under ai for good we have categories like ai for earth ai for um, health ai for accessibility okay ai ai for cultural heritage and stuff like that but ai for earth is where the the vision uh, services are predominantly used and predominantly uh, uh leveraged okay and then the demos are also something which we can see and how it is capturing uh, the images and then you know try to do species uh, uh, classification or uh, trying to map uh, uh, land coverage landmarks and stuff like that okay so uh, let us start with bing search bing search what you can do okay so let us browse right i'm going to browse a picture yep no uh, brownie points for guessing who this guy is okay so now when i browse the picture i have not even specified who it who it is right the bing search by itself it gives me a plethora of information like looks like elon musk right and then uh, right looks like elon musk and then pages some information about this similar images so similar pictures okay for elon musk all right you can try try giving uh, Jimmy Fallon and uh, try giving Ted Mosby from uh, How I Met Your Mother and see interesting results. Okay, uh, so yeah, just play around. Or you can try searching also. Okay, so find an image. So find an image is something you can. Uh, I mean, I'm very sure you know. Sometimes you want to have a specific article and then you are not sure how to search it on google so maybe one particular type of uh, play gym for kids or one particular type of uh, you know uh, um, a laundry holder or kitchen item which you're not really able to describe when you're trying to search on google so try you know finding an image with something like uh, uh, kids building and castle 
right and then you get images immediately like sand castles and stuff like that okay try searching for celebrities try searching for uh, you know weird description of items so maybe um right so it will give you the uh, names of uh, heidi klum and all the actresses who, i mean all the well known personalities whose name starts with heidi right and uh, similarly okay or you can okay let us try something like this you know a generic leaf okay let us let us see if it tries to it tries to uh, um what you can say unearth what is this like so it looks like a leaf so some uh, uh, links say it is a palm leaf some other images say it's a mango leaf okay and then it has given it is a mango leaf right it is trying to uh, uh, chart it out so it's a mango leaf and then you have you you have certain other uh, searches available as well like once you search for this then mango leaf uh, uh, cures mango leaf decoration like how to use this for decoration okay similar images pages with this okay and uh, okay so this is taken from chatra stock so yeah you, if you see it has also optical character recognition it has it has taken out the written text from the picture as well see it has it has taken the uh, the text and the num numbers from the picture which is ocr another another offering for visual search okay now these are some of the things you can do also apart from that so you can find explore landmarks you can pinpoint locations you can do stuff like this looks like right so or find chair like find chairs like this so let's say uh, maybe you know you have to uh, buy an item which is resembling some item at your home then you can always do like this find chairs like this search for so that is what we said right find an image so search for some particular image description okay so which means whatever you are typing out like kids building sand castle so it is understanding that right it is comprehending what you are trying to search for and accordingly giving out the image results okay find similar images let us try it out so similar images to this okay and then uh, i mean so this is flower so it is a, uh, a gerbera flower and then similar images to this right and uh, okay and so on and so forth so i leave you to uh, uh, i mean you know play with this kind of stuffs let us try pinpoint locations okay so it's like uh, give give a particular picture and then uh, uh, try to see what it is so it's a salt lake temple and then pages with this looks like similar images okay visual search if i'm not wrong you are able to crop a certain area and then uh, try to search within that okay so maybe let's take a complex picture and then you can chart out a, a smaller area there and then you can try to see like you know uh, what is that object so this is like the google search google vision search which you do uh, if, uh, for images which pop out on your google search images okay uh, so i'll just paste this in in my ppt okay bing.com visual search and then you can you can uh, once this uh, presentation is uploaded you can play around with the offerings okay uh, let us go on to sorry let us go on to the other other vision services okay so which is one of the innovation lab projects which is a pl planetary computer for earth so it is one of the uh, you know uh, innovation experiments innovation labs sponsored by microsoft which is using the computer vision services right so what we do is select an insect or animal right so maybe uh, let us select bees right okay and then once you do that it is going to give you all the species uh, uh, um, classification right so their genus uh, their uh, animal kingdom names uh, bio uh, uh, biological name and stuff like that so apis mellifera and western honeybee and the confidence with which you are going to do that okay so they have also shared out the notebooks here right so they have also shared out all the notebooks for this with the back end the uh, uh, python code and stuff like that okay
you can you can do this same uh, way let us try with the lion so same it is leo panthera uh, the uh, classification under the animal so genus and all those things right species genus and those things so 98% confidence then they know it's a lion and then there are certain other predictions also made with the lower probability lower confidence okay then there is also something called as camera trap right so camera trap uh, this is also a uh, uh what you can say a project which is used and which is uh, has been generated for citizen scientists right so there are naturalists and conservationists who are uh, maybe on the lookout for endangered species or some rare species and then they happen to find out something they can snap a picture and upload it and then they will reach out to other uh, con uh, uh this one uh, uh what you can say preservation centers or natural uh, uh, sanctuaries who who specialize in these kind of stuff and then you know they can connect to scientists also to get more information on these sort of things right so this is uh, the uh, camera trap okay so maybe um, i don't have any image here let us do this let us see yep it gives you it gives you classifier none but it does give you that uh, you know it is a mango leaf and uh, yep it it does that right so uh, just try try it out with other very rare species of orchids or you know endangered species of bees or insects or stuff like that so this is designed for citizen scientists to be able to reach out to a naturalist and conservationalist and uh, you know other people who provide sanctuary for all these kind of uh, endangered species okay and then there are a lot of other uh, things for ai for good where you know you you have land cover mapping you have uh, yeah so uh, you have camera trap image processing which we discussed species classification we saw so you can always you know leverage it via an api also species classification land cover mapping is also there so all these are open source and uh, notebooks are also provided by microsoft for us to you know deep dive if we are anyways trying to leverage some of these functionalities in our application okay so that was just a very brief overview for uh, for ai for earth okay so coming back to computer vision what can computer vision do right so it can also analyze and descri describe images which is like you know take a picture and it will concoct a story based on some theme like could be adventure could be sci-fi could be thriller all right so let us take a picture and then it uh, generates uh, tags okay and some description and also tries to see it's it's like a, a content filtration also whether the content is racy or adult content so no it's none you know so content is pretty uh, the image is pretty decent right and then description a bridge over a water body correct so it's not a bridge per se it's like you know a city i can say uh, overlooking a river okay over, overlooking a water body so this is perfect right then it has identified landmarks or tags there water yes sky yes lake yes it is an outdoor picture yes with sky scrapers yes there is a reflection yes overlooking yes overlooking a water body yes and uh, it's uh, supposedly it's captured during the daytime so from the picture it appears as if it's daytime right so it has uh, captured this kind of tags okay then if there are certain text like what we saw in the picture earlier in the mango leaf picture it was also capturing the text in the pictures so for this this one like you know transcript 42 right street so this is sorry this is for street 42 here so it has captured this 42 street and this number 42 here right okay and then if you do this what it can do is it can also recognize handwriting in the text so if there's handwritten text there in that so let us check out and then so this sort of you know handwritten characters also it will uh, recognize from that right and then recognize what we saw in the bing visual search recognize landmarks no this the guy needs no introduction and then i can uh, celebrate his landmarks who is this person stuff like that okay so this is also possible with computer vision having said all of this all of uh, this with a sophisticated face recognition face detection still 
still there are number of ways in which you can spoof your way into systems right and uh, normally normally so what happens is what do uh, uh, deep fake uh, detection and deep fake creation systems they do so let's say we have two faces here two distinctive faces of two very distinctive people now the face recognition can chart out rectangles right so they can discern features of eyes so they can understand that this part is the nose this part is the lips so the deep fake algorithms what they do is the face rectangle which is returned by the face recognition systems they take that rectangle they take the nodal point so they they uh, uh, take that face rectangle they take the nodal points and then they try to superimpose it on the other picture so from both the pictures they have swapped out the face rectangle okay they have uh, i mean using uh, uh, photoshopping systems and other uh, uh, means those those rectangles are now swapped right so resulting what you get is you have a superimposition of one uh, person's facial features onto the face rectangle of the other person okay so this is what to do this is image one and these are encoders with the latent factors like light uh, lighting the uh, picture lighting pose smiling blinking emotion etc and then you are using the feature maps and then you are going to superimpose so you, you are superimposing the pictures there okay or the faces there now there are while there are a lot of ways of doing this you know how how to overcome so with with the advent of technology and with the advent of you know modern systems there have been also a uh, a uh, uh, growth and uh, uh, in in hacking and sophisticated uh, development of sophisticated tools for overcoming all the you know finding uh, uh, back doors into all these uh, kind of systems right so uh, cyber attacks and those kind of stuff but uh, there are a few ways in which you can battle these kind of uh, deep fake uh, systems okay so uh, you know if there was uh, this very famous video of barack obama he was mouthing some lines and you know was plainly calling donald trump as some some mean words right so i mean people are surprised at how can one uh, one president can you know so blatantly uh, uh, speak out against some other person i mean some other important personality but then it turned out that that it was a fake so which means the deep fake was you, uh, using obama's face but mouthing someone else's words right so and and then the, it was so real that it was very um, very hard to detect by any of the you know sophisticated lie detection systems that this this was a fake video it was circulating all over and uh, this sort of content you know circulates the web each and every day right uh, so i mean uh, even so even so even with these kind of things there are a uh, certain potential flaws uh, with uh, deep fake systems and how we can detect them how how algorithms detect them okay so we will uh, look at the flaws so just uh, just have a view here you have blurry skin tone obscured objects blah 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 we will see what those are okay we'll see them with help of examples okay so as i was saying you know how they how uh, deep fakes are created so if you see here how uh, hillary clinton's face is cropped on and uh, you know it it is uh, made into a face of uh, i mean it is uh, superimposed onto the face of donald trump so uh, or sorry vice versa donald trump's face is uh, superimposed onto the uh, face of hillary clinton and same way here okay and then it can totally alter a person right you see here you see two distinctive persons here and how face swapping has has turned into a total third person same way hillary and donald trump combined together made into some other third person okay so this is not a very uh, sophisticated example so you can clearly make out that you know something uh, fishy going on i mean something you know not done very uh, great but otherwise uh, with with modern uh, face detection systems or even uh, you know face uh, what you can say compression right so on on your glossy uh, magazine co covers and your vogue uh, pictures and stuff like that so there are uh, again you know um, work done on the faces to reduce their uh, 
uh, to make your nose look you know thinner or your face thinner or have prominent high cheek bones those kind of things right but even so even with the even with the the deep fake systems there are certain flaws like for example when you're trying to superimpose right you will you will uh, have uh, when you're trying to superimpose faces and with the with the badly done uh, face face um, a deep fake of deep fake job you will have this kind of double eyebrow so you can clearly see here that you know this one eyebrow here and the actual human eyebrow at the back of the picture right okay so those kind of double eyebrows thing will be there okay and then uh, when you're trying to uh, you know uh, superimpose a, pic a picture onto some other non existent background so maybe this was just a picture and then they tried to put an obama's face here right so then you will have a blurred background so you can never really identify that okay whether he was really there or he was added uh, to the backdrop later on or the backdrop was added later on to his picture so it is kind of blurred there okay then there will be kind of uh, you know over um, what you can say uh, uh unnatural uh, highlights right so when sunlight falls on our face there will be a very natural highlight uh, on our faces right natural uh, play of uh, shadow and light but then when you when you are doing deep uh, fakes then all these qualities are not very maintained so there will be unnatural highlight uh, at at you know unwanted parts or this this you can clearly feel it as a painting i'm not a actual human face a natural human face right then you will have skin tone okay so uh, uh, when faces are spoofed okay or glossed over you can see a, a natural human skin with all its folds and wrinkles and you know the uh, aging lines okay the crow's feet and then on a uh, 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 fake profile and fake picture you will see all these flaws glossed over right so the wrinkles are gone the face is smoothened okay the uh the uh, jaw line is altered those sort of things okay and then uh on on uh, swapped uh, faces right even the skin tone will look unnatural so here as you can see when you are swapping pictures then the uh, original and the impersonator right so you can see even the uh, skin tone will look unnatural okay these are anyways just very uh, badly done or very unsophisticated ways of doing deep fakes otherwise also if you see this is paul rudd face swapped on to jimmy fallon's and could be pretty realistic right but then you see the crispness of the original is lost so when you are swapping pictures there is a sort of blur introduced here so the crispness or the sharpness of the original is lost so th that is one way of detecting okay the another could be for example double chin right so when you are superimposing sometimes if the face rectangles are not of the similar shape the original picture's chin and the overlapped picture's chin could present a double a double layer right so this is a real image and then in the in the uh, fake image or the photoshopped image you could you could see that you know because of the superimposing and the face rectangles not matching correctly there's a double chin there could be spatial inconsistencies which mean that the photoshopped uh, uh, face okay or the face created by deep fake doesn't match the uh, age or uh, the uh, quality of the other parts for example if you look at the face and the arms right clearly the age of the uh, face and the arms don't go together right the skin texture texture and the smoothness of the arm will not match the face so that is some uh, you know uh, that could be spatial inconsistencies right there could be yeah so there could be like for example you know when you're trying to spoof uh, a person's uh, in, i mean a person smiling instead of a person who's sad for that matter then you also end up losing some of the sharpness and tones okay then you have uh, you have shimmering shimmering meaning you will have uh, the glow or the um, uh, light on you know i mean un uh, unnatural parts so unnatural highlights right so impossible that you can have a shimmering effect or light falling only on certain part of your face and then the other part of the face is not uh, 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 privy to the lights which are shining let's say if, if there are any so those sort of inconsistencies which is shimmering you know that that can also occur 
and the final is border so if you look at your, our normal face right you cannot actually discern uh, the uh, hairline i mean your face facial hair and the uh, uh, border of the face so it's not like you know this is my face and then on a very particular predefined border the uh, Uh, hairline will i mean the facial hair will start right so but when you're cropping images and pasting then that is how you're doing it so it's very evident that you know someone has pasted a rectangle and then that is how a very clear demarcation between your face and from where where your facial hair starts is done so this is the normal original image and this is the uh, deep fake image all right so image which is created by deep fake algorithms so those sort of uh, you know clear cut borders if they are defined for pictures then uh, also so at first glance if you see not very natural but once you understand those kind of you know inherent flaws which could, which could potentially have then it is easier to uh, spot the deep fakes all right so teeth also right so when you are trying to do that the crispness or the uh, the length and those kind of things are lost okay and yeah so these are some of the ways in which you know you can combat uh, deep fake and it, uh, they could be potentially detected so before i conclude right i just want you to understand that uh, i mean if you really want to get down to the nitty gritties of face detection right so face detection what they use is they uh, basically use principal pca principal component analysis where what you try to essentially do is you are trying to reduce in you are trying to reduce the dimensions right so from 3d to 2d or multiple dimensions to lesser dimensions which will still retain the most of the data about the picture or most of the uh, information about uh, uh, the person or the picture right so for that you have concepts like eigen values eigen vectors and then you know you will find a direction vector on to which you will project the data so as to minimize the projection error and you are going to reduce from n to n minus k dimensions and stuff like that right and then uh, uh, yeah so if i if i if you really want to get into the nitty gritties i would like to go through that but then i'm sure by the end of that uh, me and you both will be in this state so yeah so if you really want to just uh, you know get up and running with ai as a service and just use normal face detection just get an azure subscription and you are all set okay so i hope uh, you know that sort of covers it and would be happy to take questions if any otherwise we move on to the next session